Oh yeah, we about to get this bitch going. Film study time. Oh yeah. Got some orange juice. Where we at? We in here. Main bitch wet like a speedboat. Fall around and get shot like a free throw. Nigga, be the big, big bag when I pull up. Okay, so with Donald. We in here. Dallas in the building. You know I fuck with Dallas. Tough. We letting them get in here. So what we're doing today is we got the film study going. Let me know if my joint lagging. I got some more light so it could be a little bit brighter. You know what I'm saying? About to get busy. Was goody with James Jackson. You know, we just tightening the mic up. Y'all can't see how I got the mic. Let me see so y'all can see. Fuck up. Yeah, y'all know what that is. Scotty dripping. Yo, what y'all know about that JPEG? What y'all know about that JPEG? What y'all know about that JPEG? Just the last one, then we gonna get busy with the film study. Y'all need y'all like, if y'all really want to do the film study with me, you gotta turn on your YouTube. We gonna study, um, we gonna study a fight, cause I wanna talk about this certain fight. It's a heavyweight fight. We gonna study it. We're going to study it. We're going gonna, gonna, gonna to be talking about what I'm seeing, breaking it down. You feel me? We getting it going. Get up in here, hit that like button. Got to get the, the height ready. You feel me? There we go. All right. Okay. We about to get this in real quick. I got my phone with me right here. 
we about to get it in. We gonna watch today. I'm gonna I'm gonna show y'all the. I'm gonna show y'all study of um. Of uh, Evander Holyfield and James Tony. The reason why, cause it's a like a old enough fight, but it's a it's a new enough fight. Excuse me, got a little burps. The reason why I'm gonna show it is because. Evander Holyfield is known to be a dog, and James Tony is known to be a dog. They're from the same damn near era. It's just that James Tony was a middleweight. So I'm showing y'all because that nigga Evander Holyfield, he had defense and he was good, but he didn't move his head a lot. And James Tony was fast. He had defense. He moved his head and he stayed in good position. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna just give y'all round by round play. Of what's going on? So if y'all want to hold on, I'm gonna show y'all where I'm at. I'm on YouTube right now, and they jumping in the middle of the ring. I'm on YouTube watching James Tony. It's Evander Holyville versus James Tony HD boxing online. Got 16k views. You know what I mean? I'm at two minutes and 39 seconds. If y'all just want to grab the um. If y'all just want to grab the uh the joint and get on there real quick, pause. I'm gonna let y'all get on there real quick. I'm gonna go live too on my face on my Instagram. Oh, I need another charger. Oh, you know, I'm just gonna go live a little bit for a little bit. Then I'm gonna switch it. Yo, what's goody, baby? What's goody? We live right now. I'm just getting a couple live people on here from IG so they can do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Or if y'all want to, no, I'm going to just do it live on live on uh, the joint. If y'all come in, when they come in on my IG, we're going to get it going. But the, the reason why I'm showing the James Tony joint is because James Tony is is what I'll be talking about for a skill set and knowing how to get things done with that old school type of skill set with Floyd. Hey, Mr. Skate Skateology was good, baby. That's Ohio nigga. It gotta be. Um, I'm doing I'm on you. I'm just going on here for a little bit. I'm on YouTube doing a live. Y'all can go on to YouTube, Troy Killertainment King. We on a YouTube doing a live with the film study of James Tony. We doing it right now. We getting it in. I'm about to you go in and show y'all what this real work be looking like. How they how they, everybody's supposed to be doing their page for real. We talking boxing for real. We talking real boxing. We out here in Oakland. You know what I mean? During the time of the um the in the house chilling. You know what I mean? Y'all just got to make sure I got a lot of organized stones in y'all homes. Things like that. You know, things to block radiation signals and stuff. You know what I mean? You want to make sure you want to have a healthy, a healthy environment. Get plants in there. Get good oxygen. You know what I mean? Get a good, get a good feel. You know what I mean? We just getting in the zone. Let me see what my guys is talking about. What's good with my folks? We just in here. We doing a quick live. We going live with the boxing, man. Come in. and What's up with Mr. Marcus? Rare Breed was good. We about to do a live film study with James Tony against Evander Holyfield. Real quick, y'all see I got the right eye open. Y'all got to know y'all history, know what's going on when y'all see that. All right. When y'all see that, y'all should know what's, who I am. I'm going to put both up. Y'all only get a little bit of that. I'm going to put both up now. But y'all need to just know about that. You know what I mean? Because if they ain't right, you know what I mean? Fantasy matchup, Roy Jones. No, we, we ain't doing no fantasy joints. What we doing is 
what we doing is we about to go in and do this fin this James Tony film study. So I can show y'all how this boxing, how I'll be chopping people up. Defense masterpiece. That's what I'm saying. We about to do it on. I'm about to end the live. I just came on here real quick to tell y'all. We about to go in here and do the James. Look, hold on. Let me show y'all. We about to do the James Tony film study. We doing it. We got a little herb. Little herb. We about to do it real quick. We got some apples, but I'm done eating for tonight. Got some orange juice. Orange juice. Some kush. Some gorilla glue. Got the toothpick. Get get at me on the a hey, Maxim. Maxim, baby. What's up? Sucker free. The holy field fight was a yeah, it was. What's up with my boy Greg, bro? Let me turn the camera around. What's up with my Philly nigga, man? Hey, blood, we about to Greg. We go. I'm going live. I'm about to do a little film study with these cats on this Evander and James Tony. Get at me on the um. What's up with my cousin? Simply Perfectus. Sim Simply Perfect Princess. What's good? We about to get on um. We about to do the film study with James Tony. Put my people on. What's up? What's up with my hit fit family? We about to do a film study with James Tony on YouTube. Go follow me on YouTube, Troy Killertainment King. Just go on there, subscribe. What's up with my cousin? Yeah, we about to do the film study. I'm about to end the live. I'm about to go on my YouTube if you want to see it. I only got a couple, couple seconds left. Couple joints. We about to go on YouTube and get it in real quick. See, I'm on. I'm live on YouTube right now. They can see y'all. Yeah, blood, James. We about to study this shit. Look what my nigga James is saying, bro. You one of the rare pages that study and break down boxing instead of gossiping about it. Look at that. We live. We going live. We live right now. Look at that. Let me show y'all. Show y'all these cats. Uh, we live. See, I'm the only nigga who go live. Listen, just so y'all know, when y'all see this, both of y'all, y'all know, I go live on Instagram and YouTube simultaneously. I'm the nigga who doing that first. I'm the dude who changing the social media shit far as the boxing. I go live on both at one time and do workouts, talk boxing, because I got people all over the country who be following me with this in Guatemala and Australia. Believe me, I'm not capping. They be hitting me on the WhatsApp asking for knowledge because that's what I'm about. I'm about giving it. What's up with Julius the Chef, baby? Your dad was a legend, bro. Julius the Chef, bro. And that man culinary art skill is, is on point. If you be following me, bro, I'll be cooking up some dishes on the vegan side. What's up with my sister, Callie? All cap. Hey, blood. Chill. We on here to teach. What's up with my man, Boxing Sweet Science, blood? We on here. Hey, blood. Y'all got to go on all y'all. What up with my bro, Julius, man? The culinary art. Yo daddy was the hawk. You know what I'm saying? Hey, if y'all don't know, his daddy was the all-time hardest puncher ever. Julian the Hawk Jackson, blood. Oh, y'all got to look him up. One punch, knockout power. They don't even make them like him no more. So don't even trip. Don't even trip. But yeah, blood, we on here. Um, I got a live on YouTube right now. I'm about to get on home with my people. Let me show y'all again. I got a live on the YouTube going right now. We in the lab. We about to do the film study with the twine. So we just letting people come in and get ready. It was lit. Follow me on YouTube right now. Troy Killertainment King. Look, I'm live right now. Troy Killertainment King. Go on there. Get at me. And y'all can follow me. About to do the film study for the people. One. Ooh-wee. 
I told y'all I'm about to change this whole shit up, blood. I'm about to change it all up. It's about to be lit. All right, y'all ready? I'm on two minutes and twenty two minutes and thirty nine seconds. The, uh, it's about the beginning of the first round. I'm about to start. I got the volume down low because, you know, they be tripping on the copyrights. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to, I'm about to just, I'm going to take a little quick hit and then I'm going to lock in real quick. I'm going to show you how I be doing it. I'm going to show you how I be locking in as I be studying. I look at every detail. I'm going to show you all how I be doing it. Now, watch when you go back and watch the James Tony fight. Two sevens. That's 14. When you go back and watch the fight, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Ready, go. I don't even need to hear the announcers for real. Right now, it's just James Tony. It looked like Evander got a little nervous energy because he's a little older now. They come out, James Tony's fainting him and being quick off rip because he's he's a lot smaller than Holyfield. So he's going to use his speed right now from what I'm seeing. He's using speed and head movement, staying close, checking him with the jab and the hook. So he just chilling. He fainting, staying busy with the jab. No matter what Evander throwing, I'm noticing James Tony is really answering with a lot of jabs up and down and moving his head with the feints. Putting his head and shoulders, keeping his shit tight, moving on both sides. And he keep doing it. He catching the punches. He flicking the jab, too. He ain't putting too much on the jab. He flicking it. He flicking it. He's seeing what he got. He in close now. He was just, to, it's the first round, and he already closed the distance. And that's not a good thing for Evander, but Evander is used to being the shorter fighter closing the distance. So now he used to be in there, but for this fight, he shouldn't want to do, he shouldn't have wanted to do that because he should make James Tony work to get inside. And now Vander Holyfield is already trying to throw hard shots and make it a war. And it's only been, it's the first round and with a minute and 30 left. He, James Tony is making him speed up his progress because he's the older fighter by, by fake pressuring him. Moving his head and really just putting a jab on him. That's fake pressure. Because he ain't going to really punch hard right now. He just checking with the hook, moving the head, and throwing the jab. It's the first round. He chilling. This is what I be telling y'all you got to do. And he going to get hit with some hard shots. James Tony is just throwing a lot of simple shots, man. He really just throwing a lot of jabs. And every now and then, he's through two one-twos this round. He just catching Holyfield's punches in the shell. Chilling, relaxing, stay coming to him with the jab. Looking for shots, checking the hook. Look, James Tony came to him and didn't even use the right hand. So that's the shit y'all don't be seeing. And it's the first round. He came to him, checked him with the hook, hook, uh. And he just looking at him, just hitting him with this hand. Not And, and Holyfield working hard, throwing both hands. Throwing hard hooks because he feel like he bigger and he can hurt him. But that's the wrong idea. Holyfield tried to get two in after the bell and James Tony wasn't feeling it. Everybody's standing up and Holyfield, it's the first round and this is the older Holyfield. He already breathing. He already breathing, bruh. Not a good look. Mad size difference. They showing the replay of Holyfield ripping shots. And that's what I'm saying. He shouldn't be ripping shots right now. He should be chilling, fainting, and working off the jab. Primarily keeping them up, keeping his low ass back. Bang, bang, jabbing him up and down, moving, 
stand on his toes like he doing moving pop 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 check hook and doing the same thing but james tony is doing well holy field should be doing moving backwards james tony and not hardly throwing no right hands he fake throwing one twos touching his gloves and now it's the second round and james tony still coming to him letting the jabs go off every counter he letting jabs go off every counter. He jabbing with Holyfield jab. He jabbing and slipping the jab. He hooking. He just hooked off the jab. He's still jabbing, double hooking on the inside. He's not letting the right hand go. That's a that's a craftsman. That's a craftsman. He leaping in with hooks. Now he just threw a one-two. But he's still working. Now he taunting him. Making him thinking this ain't shit. Now he fainting, he moving, he just moving and fainting. It's the second round, two ten. He just hooked him off the off the joint, off the lead hook. He jabbing to the chest. He just fainting and jabbing, man, staying real calm, making Holyfield work, catching his punches. He actually just lofting punches out there, seeing what he got, slipping him, letting Holyfield get off, catch his shit. Niggas being too in a hurry to get their shit off without setting up their work. That's what I'm trying to say. James Tony hooking off the jab right now. He just chilling, blood. He literally just chilling on the inside, slipping his shots. He on the inside, slipping his shots, catching his punches. Catching them on the inside, tying him up. When he tie up, he got one arm. It's the second round with one, a minute and 22 left. When he tying him up. It's something y'all know. When you tie him up, you is I learned it in jujitsu. You put your hand on the man's bicep so he can't do nothing. That's how you tie him up. And from there, you could swim around and grab the hand, or you could hold him and maneuver him. That's jujitsu, but it's boxing too, because that's how you want to block a man. Man could go to throw a hook, you could up uh, and just catch him. That's the art of boxing. Holyfield still trying to rip shots. There's 30 seconds left, 50 seconds left in the second round. And Holyfield, don't, he, he blocking punches and he kind of look confused just right now a little bit. Because James Tony ain't pressuring him for real, but he's staying close and hitting him with just jabs. He's just jabbing up and down, looking at him, jabbing. He only using the jab for real right now. 90% of 95% of his punches is with the lead hand in the second round. James Tony. Holyfield trying to bounce with him and find the rhythm too. But see, Holyfield used to being coming forward and being busy, and that's what's throwing Holyfield's rhythm off. Cause he got a he got a weight on James Tony. James Tony threw a double jab right in, hand in, and caught Holyfield. And Holyfield want to come back with hard shots. And he loading up and getting tense and can't. And James Tony just slipping. He meant looking and Freddie Roach in the corner right now. Let me take a drink. The whole joint go like this until Vander. It's not that James Tony really did anything. He did start lining him up with left um with right hands, but it's not like he did anything major. He just stayed close. Holy they showing a replay with Holyfield hooking him. He's staying in range and moving his head. That's a lot of these new boxers don't do. They don't know how to stay in range and be relaxed. They either out of range trying to work in or they in range moving back and doing unnecessary moves because they're not comfortable being in that inside range. James Tony is always in medium range, just a third round. And he's even in a third round, he come out, he just make Holyfield miss a lot. He just making him miss a lot. And he just constantly skipping to him, flicking the jab, touching him with it. Fast too. Holyfield just hit him with a hard right hand. But James Tony kind of seen it, so he's still in the pocket. And everybody's screaming. And Holyfield, like, oh, I know I hit him hard, but damn, he's still there. Because James Tony seen the punch and he rolled with it slightly. And it's the third round with two minutes left. 
And the thing is, was making him good. He just not giving Holyfield no one target and no one shot. He jabbing him up and down, and then sometimes he hooking and getting make him forget about the straight punches. And he moving his head while he doing. Ooh, he just went up downstairs to his guts. And he ain't like that. That was a minute and fifty. About a minute and fifty five left. He uh, Holyfield was trying to do the cross guard block. He lifted his elbow up. James Tony came under with the shot. Bang. And Holyfield dropped his elbow. That's the start of something horrible. And he's still just poking little shots on the inside, short hooks. Bang, bang, just short shit. Not even hard, just placing it. Now he just walked off and shuffled with a minute 20 left just to give him different looks. Switch up southpaw, come back right hand. He trying to just steal. He trying different moves right now in the third round, seeing how alert Holyfield is. He throwing lead rights now, staying on the inside of him. He felt like Holyfield had slowed down a great bit, even right here in the third. And he just hitting him with little shit on the inside, talking shit to people. He just really just chilling in there. It's only the third round, and he got Holyfield on the inside trying to do a lot. Not James Tony on the ropes where he want to be. Holyfield leaning on him trying to get a break where he should be jabbing him to the guts. 40 seconds left in the third round. He's still moving ahead. Now, Holyfield trying to use the jab and back up and keep James Tony off of him. But James in the shell, leaning back, giving him a false target, catching his jab. And then he already leaning back. So as soon as Holyfield thought it right, he just roll it and let it. And Holyfield falling in with the right. It's the third round, 20 seconds left. Now he landing clean jabs, popping his head back. That's the, that's when you start doing that. That's a sign of bad shit. Holyfield trying to come back. He keep throwing too hard. He got to just place him. James Tony just touching. Oh, he just ripped to his guts, though. He just ripped to his guts. Holyfield walking back to the corner with the old walk. It don't look good. He looked like he got his second win, but if I'm saying that in the third round, I feel like he got his second win too early. He got his second win. We studying James Tony and Evander Holyfield, the Holyfield, the heavyweight. Okay, Holyfield hit him with a right hand, and then he missed a hook in the right hand because he was too overzealous. When you throw that shot on James Tony with that right, you got to step to your right. And then throw the hook because you stepping around him. You can't. That's what Roy Jones was doing. If you don't believe me, just look it up. That's what Adrian Broner did it on these one with this one fighter too. He be stepping around. You throw the right, and as you throw it, you go to the right. And then when they be trying to turn, you will keep hit, keep hitting them with the hooks. Watch James Tony and Roy. All right. It's the fourth round. And holy oh shit. He just hit him with a one, two, because Holyfield got wild and missed the shot all up against the ropes. And James Honey hit him with a one, two and startled him. Now he getting off clean shots, hurting him to the body, poking him, hitting him with one twos. He breaking him down, putting combinations together on his ass. Holyfield coming back with just one shot at a time, and that's the problem. You got to put combinations together on the uh, slick guy. James Tony doing what he want. He getting the rest on the inside. He's still in Holyfield in range and then falling in. And he know Holyfield ain't got the inside work like he do. Now he just picking little shots. Kind of like when Floyd was doing against Omar Henry. Oh, he went to his guts hard as fuck. And um, a minute and 50 seconds left in the fourth round. Now, he doing something on the ropes where he putting his head on both sides. Holyfield working, but he putting his heads on both sides, catching the punches. And then that's opening up shot. Bang, bang. He catching him. Boom, boom. He, rock, he rocking him. And now that I'm looking in the fourth round in a minute and 30 when y'all watch it, Holyfield is square and James Tony is at north-south angle. And that's where he having his problems at. Holyfield is ripping. But he's standing square like this. And James Tony is at the angle. So when he only feels throwing, he just catching him. Boom, boom. And then he coming and splitting him right down the middle to the body and to the head. Because Holyfield don't have good footwork in this position. It's the fourth round with a minute left. 
Now Holyfield is kind of gassed because he couldn't he not land in clean punches. And you know when you throw hard punches and it's the punches you miss that make you tired. Hey, I'm just saying what they be saying. We studying James, Tony, and Holyfield. Mm. He just pulled, he just did a shoulder pull, shoulder roll. Bang, came back. Now he cutting him up with the same hand on the inside. Holyfield is throwing shots, but he's not placing shots. You have to place the punches, man. And when you don't place them on counter punchers, you throw one, you go up, you put the jab out there, and then you place the right hand on the stomach. Bang, and then you look over. Bang, you kind of, oh, on a slick guy, you throw one at a time. Not too hard, not too soft. You just put them in that pop, 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 and try to get his timing and be looking. And that's what he doing on Holyfield. And Holyfield not placing no punches. He just throwing combinations with no real intent. He just throwing. Hop, hop, hop. And James Tony just going, hop, hop, hop. Pops catching him up under here, sliding over. Holyfield got to be one, two. Oh, you throw the one, two. Oh, I'm going to throw the one, two. See, when you boxing on this level, you be throwing punches and thinking at the same time. You got to be ready to be able to know how to switch up your rhythm at the blink of an eye. You throw the one, two, and you fall over them. Then you come right up under. Bang! And then you slug roll back to see what they're going to do. They might throw something. You catch it. Uh-uh. Then you come right back. Bang, bang, bang. You got to be able to switch it up, switch up rhythm, see shit, look. And that's what James Tony is doing. He's catching him. Holyfield in between his punches. And Holyfield is, has no real... um structure plan he has no like cosmogol cosmo cosmological plan of how to punch he just throwing punches james tony is jabbing as intent he know when the man bend over he throwing the one two soon as he bend over he know to go behind his elbow with the uppy with the hook the shovel hook to hit the guts he dub now it's the fifth round he running shit on him he doubling up hooks up and down. You know that's James Tony's move. He doubling up hooks. Now, and he's still, the thing is, I'm explaining all of this to y'all. He still always just stole him with a one-two and hurt him bad. He hurt on both feet. He ain't he wobbly. It's the fifth round, 218 left. Holyfield is hurt. He's hurt. And James Tony is the I want to mind you, all I'm saying in the, in the fight, he's still staying in medium range doing all of that. That's a lot of movement, relaxation, moving. It, you got to make it just a part of your boxing. You just be catching punches, always looking for punch. Sometimes they don't even be throwing shit, and you just be might think they be throwing it. You even got to do those motions, man. That shit is important. It's better not to fall asleep on the faint. Because when you fall asleep on the faint, that means that could potentially be a hard shot. You He faint you and you don't even move. That's bad. You have to react to the faint. Because the time you don't react to the faint, I could just go yop and shoot in with a right and just clip you. When you react to the faint, you, you do a defensive move. You know what I mean? Make sure you catching the punches and looking. So it's the fifth round, minute left. They on the inside already, and James Tony is using the hook up, hook down, stand, stealing him with the one two, sticking his tongue out at him in the fifth round, fifty seconds left. Really pulling moves, bro. Real moves at the finest level. These are moves at the finest level of a Mason. Moves, blood pulling moves on top of moves. Like, yeah, I got a Torino. Get your Torinos. Get your Torinos. Waves. Look, blood. It's the fifth round with 30 seconds left, and he just hitting him with clean one twos. And anyway, I want to say this he hitting him with one twos, but he ain't putting all his might into the one two. That's what y'all got to really understand when y'all watching this. He not putting all his might into the one-two. We're in the fifth round with 10 seconds left. He not putting his might into the one-two. He just putting it out there. Pop, pop. Just naturally putting it out there. 
and Holyfield still throwing punches with no real cosmological intent. He not like throwing a one-two to go to James Tony's guts because he keep leaning over here. It's like he not thinking about that. He just thinking about punching. And that's when on a high level with a nigga like James Tony, nothing you do can be in there to just be doing it for no reason. Everything you do has to be the highest thought of a stone mason in the stone age. You got to be a pyramid builder when you're thinking about James Tony, because everything James Tony doing is to set you up for something. Everything, a faint, a step to the side, a, a taunt, a, a shot, a stick in his tongue. He doing it all to try to break you down. He in every intent of every move he doing, he has thought behind it. It's nothing he's doing is wasted. Nothing. Blood. He's a he's the one of the highest craftsmen you ever seen. Old school shit. It's the sixth round. He come out, get right in range off rip. And now they trading jabs because it's the sixth round. See that? And that's the thing. Now it's the middle. Oh, shit. He just threw a left hand, a double jab left hand and hit Holyfield over the top and hurt him. In the, sixth, first, in the beginning of the sixth round. It was fast, too. And what he doing is he just lofting a double jab out there quick because, oh, shit, hit him with a fucking hook. Made him lift his leg up. In real life, though, on the tape, I wish I could show y'all this while y'all watching it on here. Y'all be like, what? Because whatever I'm saying, I'm not capping. He hit him and made him lift his leg up. Now he on the inside just doing like little Floyd type shit, just check hooking him. Bang, hooking him downstairs. Bang. He just did it again with two minutes left in the uh, sixth round. Now he leading with right hands because you got to remember it's the recency effect. The last thing he just remembered was two hooks. Bang, bang, up and down. So that's what his mind on. It's time for a right hand. Bang. It's called the recency effect. It's whatever you're going to remember the last thing I did, so I do opposite. Nobody never going to explain that to you like that. So don't trip. This is me, Troy, the God in the Ruach Elohim. So he, look, he in the, um, on the sixth round right now. With a minute 30 left, just running numbers on holy field. Just running numbers with just punches, arithmetic. He just so comfortable in, in the inside, outside, and he's still fake pressing him with the jab, staying in range, walking off, slipping him. When he's on the inside, he just touching him, touching, touching, touching. Then he'll touch him, rip, like he just did, because that's the setting off the rhythm. We touching, we touching, bang, bang, and then you rip up underneath, still in him with a one, two, running the shots up underneath. That's another thing a lot of y'all don't do. Y'all don't run them shots up underneath, man. You got to run them shots up underneath to the guts. You got to, blood. I'll be doing, if you don't watch, watch my sparring, I'll be doing it. And I don't be sparring no chumps. I'll be on the inside running my six up underneath. That's the rear uppercut. He just won Holyfield for trying to use his head. Crafty tactic. He can frustrate it because that being punches ain't working. He can't land a clean one. Holyfield on the inside. James Tony still, he see the Holyfield is kind of tired. So now he just stealing him with shots. Stand on the inside, catching him with clean combinations. God, Jesus. Now, look, what he did was he made him work hard for like the last 40, 30 to 40 seconds. So now when Holyfield go back to his corner, he's going to not get real rest for the minute. Because it's different if you just was chilling boxing and then the last minute of the fight and you kept him off you, then you get another minute to rest. He making him work in the last portion. So he really egg gassed in the rest period. Think about what I'm saying. He talking to the judge and doubling up the hook to his guts. Detroit style. Bang. See, he stole him with a one-two and rolled in with the one-two. He went bang, bang, and slipped in. And when Holyfield came back, he went over his head. That's an old school tactic. 
Now he on the inside. We on the inside. He got him like this. So he can't really get nothing off because his arms is down. And he kind of like. This is a real clever defense, man. You got to be sparring a lot and practicing. Now he come out. It's the seventh round. He's still staying in medium range. And he hitting him with fast feints. And he's sitting down on the hook a little more, more that I noticed. And he did the same move. He threw the one, two, and fell in. Because he know that uh, Holyfield going to try to answer with the right. Because the counter to the right is the right hand. Ooh, he in tight with the D. James Tony in tight. He real, he tight with the shell. And he got his hand open in the glove. Because he know Holyfield going to try to load up on the hook. Doubling up. And he, oh, he just threw an overhand just to get inside. He threw the overhand just to work his way inside. It's seven round with two minutes left. James Tony just working inside and Holyfield not throwing no punches because he too he worried about blocking the punches. He's in a cross guard. He's in a cross guard, but when you can't do that with James Tony, you got to switch up the looks. And then he because James Tony just keep throwing the same punches, one twos because Holyfield. Now listen. The cross guard and the Philly shell is two different defenses. The cross guard is when you like that and you use the hand, you use the, the back hand to block the right hand, but then you're going to have to use it to block the hook too because that's the hand you use to block the jab, the back hand if it's two righties. So the cross guard is if you don't know how to roll the shoulder, you go like this. But then if you're not looking, you got to be able to come back here too. But in the shell, what makes it better is if you could just go back and then you just come up here. And that's what the, the, the difference between their defenses. And on top of everything I'm telling you, Vander Holyfield is not moving his head. That's the difference. Every time I say something, I'm explaining to you how James Tony is running combinations and he's moving his head up and down, even in range. He, he continuously moving his head, taking angles and keeping his hands in certain positions. And he's still not throwing nothing hard yet. He's sitting down on a couple shots, but he's just putting them together. Hop, hop, catching him, making sure he's catching him clean. He'll throw a light one, two, bang, bang, right on the chin. Oh, he just hit him with a hard right hook to the body. That hurt Holyfield. He put his elbow down a little bit, just a tad bit, real quick. That's the seventh round. James Tony, oh, just, oh, it's done. James Tony just rucked, walked up on him. And just hurt him to the body. He just walked up on him and hit him with a lead right hand. And then he just really made him work for that last 40 seconds again. Then he just keep throwing a one-two, catching him clean every time, dog. The thing is, y'all don't have to throw the one-two hard like, yow, yow. It's just all you want to do is keep breaking the chin down. Bang, bang. Got you. Bang, bang. Got you. Bang, bang, bang. You got power, you got power, blood. If you got Deontay Wilder power, bang, bang. When you hit that chin, they're going to go to sleep. If you got um, Gervonta power, you hit them, they're going to go to sleep. If you got Errol Spence power, you hit them on the chin, bang, bang. You might stumble them, then you hit them again. Bang, bang, they're going to go. You know what I mean? Um, you got Danny Garcia, same thing. You know what I mean? Sean Porter, same thing. If you like Malinaji, then you got to be boxing and really just being accurate with the chin. That, 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 hitting it multiples of times, like Amir Khan. You know what I mean? But you can't be just trying to throw hard like you, Deontay Wilder. That's going to make you tired, and that's going to make you miss and rush. That's not the point of boxing. It's hit and not get hit. So you got to know how to hit according to your style. It's a time for lead punches. You break them down. And James Tony now, it's the eighth round. And James Tony is really pulling moves. Ooh, shit. Throwing one, two, and hopping to the right and throwing a hook. Ooh, Holyfield trying to grab him when he did it. James Tony is walking to his right. So he have a harder time grabbing him. It's two, 220 left in the eighth round. <laughs> Had a little burpy burp. Oh, he's stealing him because he's moving his head. And he just, yeah, see how I come off that rhythm? Yeah, and that's what he's doing to him, catching him, stepping to the side. That's tricking him. 
He don't know where to look at. He don't know how to catch you. See, the fighters in this era, they they taught the lead with the jab and find you. But James Tony moving his head and stepping side to side and hopping sometimes and going to the shell and then doing this and going side to side and then just walking off doing like this, switching from south part to right hand. It's the eighth round with 140 left. And he doing all of that, and you can't even find him with a jab, so you just stop using it. You don't even know why, though. Now, Holyfield not even using his jab no more like he was taught to use. <clears throat> and he just still picking little shots on the inside. He's not even hitting hard. He just going pop, 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 pop. But he making sure they clean, going to his body, poking. <clears throat> Holyfield just on the inside with his arms crossed. Because he, he really don't move his head. He not moving his dome. So James Tony could just, whatever, he always going to be there for it. Look, James Tony didn't even do nothing. He walked up on him. Holyfield covered up. James Tony just grabbed him and turned and spent around him. With 50 seconds left in the eighth round. Ooh, popped his head up with a little uppy. Just a little shot. Them shots break you down. Ooh, caught him with a one-two and hurt him. He hurt. He hurt. He hurt. He hit him with a hook. He damn near about to kill him. He hit him with clean combinations. Holyfield is definitely hurt. It's 20 seconds left in the eighth round. And James Tony just really chilling, like catching him with little shit because he ain't moving his head. Catching him with a check hook because he ain't really kept his head leaning to the right too long. 10 seconds left in the eighth round. Oh, see, James Tony was a mistake he made, but he stayed in position even in the mistake. He threw a right, fell forward, kept his hand up tight, put his shoulder back in front. When Holyfield tried to rip the hooks, he didn't do nothing but hit the arm. And he made him work hard in the last 40 seconds because he just hit him with all them clean punches as you just seen him bleeding from the mouth. It's a good scrap. He getting work. He getting work. He's getting work. Telling him to take charge. But that's the thing. How do we take charge? That's where you have to start telling him, hey, bro, he doing a lot of upper body movement. Keep your distance. Jab him to the sternum. That's how you do that, my G. Not to downgrade this brother, but, you know, James Tony is pulling a number, and they probably thought that never could happen, but. You, at that point, that's when you got to tell him, hey, blood, he's doing a lot of upper body movement, doing that, jerking, jerking, jab to the chest, jab to the sternum, jab to the test, jab to the sternum. Vander Holyfield came out with the authoritizing jab, but James Tony is literally just catching him, staying close. Ooh, he just hit him with a double right hand. Holyfield not looking good. He tired, and the shots then broke him down. He trying to block him, but he don't know how to use the cross block all the way good. Cause James Tony running the straight hand right hook. I mean the straight right, the straight right hand left hook. He's slipping. He's still staying close, using the jab. And when you in the shell, he keeping that hand right. And Holyfield gonna throw that hook on the inside. That's what he know old school tricks. Ooh, he just darted in with a hard one too fast on Holyfield because he know he tired. He using the speed to get it. Ooh, he poked him to the stomach with a jab and hurt him. Holyfield loading up on one shot at a time, falling all over the place. He off balance because he kind of weary of the feet. Oh, he just threw a sloppy one too and missed. <laughs> James Tony, it's a ninth round with 50 left. James Tony in the corner flexing this shit. Ooh, he hitting him with check hooks and just picking him. Holyfield ready to go. He's ready to go. He's hitting him. He just, oh, shit. He's putting a number on him. Arithmetic. He's down. Garlic. Garlic. He got, listen, the thing is, James Tony didn't, it wasn't one punch that hurt him. They stopped it. They stopped it in the ninth round. Listen, let me tell you why. It wasn't one punch that was hurting him, and that's more dangerous because you're just taking shots after shots after shots. 
James Tony was just hitting him clean, clipping him. Bang, bang, bang. Hitting him with clean shots to the body. Bang, 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 bang. And, and Holyfield couldn't defend himself properly. It would have been better if he would have just got knocked out and stopped because then they would have just stopped it. But when somebody like James Tony accurately hitting you on your chin, hitting you to the solar plexus, to the ribs, blood, that could damage you long term. That's what people don't understand. Like, why are you getting stopped? He wouldn't even, he didn't, hey, blood, he could have killed the man. Holyfield is an all-time great legend, but, man, you can't be taking them shots from James Tony because he a legend, too, in his own right. He's been doing this for a long time. He almost got 100 fights, bro. He got 100 some fights. Holyfield looked like his, he hurt a little bit because he lost because he a champion at heart, and champions don't like to go out and defeat. He felt like, damn, I'd rather just, and they say, you know, I'd rather just die, but that's just something they say, man. It's a prize. But that's how you feel. I mean, you put your everything into it and you just, man, everything you try, you can't do nothing. He just hit you, bang, bang. Cause he, and this has nothing to do with him being stronger than you because James Tony started at middleweight. And he's fighting Evander Holyfield, who started at light heavyweight and made his career name at cruiser and heavyweight. Understand what I'm saying. At that point, it had nothing to do with size. It was all about knowledge. It has nothing to do with physical, dog. That's what I keep telling y'all. And what we tell what on this channel, on this channel, I'm telling you, on this channel, knowledge is spirituality, spiritual consciousness guiding you. Right hemisphere of the brain. Boxing, that's how you, but you got to use the left hemisphere to understand different things of what you're seeing to put it together in your style. That's what the left hemisphere do. It, it differentiates. It picks apart the styles of a James Tony, a Floyd Mayweather, a George Benton. Even though they all got the shell, the left part of your brain picks what's different of it. But the right hemisphere of your brain lets you see how all they shells were divine in sense or how all they shells work for them to make them the best you see what i'm saying and james tony man just to uh tie that into boxing he just had more knowledge of the craft of boxing the little details to move your head to stay close with the fake pressure faints jabs staying close weathering the storm catching the punches letting him throw hard punches and stand close and catching them because Holyfield is taller than James. So when he stay close, he really can't throw the hardest shot he want to throw because he need a little more leverage. He's taller. That's just that's just law. Unless you really practice on how to deliver short shots. That's why you tall fighters got to still work your inside work too. You got to practice that too. You know what I mean? And James Tony knew that. He just knew the skill set. It's the skills, man. Skills pay the bills, blood. Skills and uh, and Holyfield got work, the real deal got work, blood. But it's just when it get in there with somebody whose craftsmanship is just a just on the highest level, dog. It's not about size, bro. All the time, now if somebody got to say, now you know who got the same craftsmanship as another fighter. We talking about people who fight like James Tony. Now, you would say, well, to fight in the style of James Tony? No. Do the fundamental one-on-one -on -one things that people do as James. Catching punches, slipping punches, blocking them with your shoulder. That's just not a shoulder roll thing. That's boxing one-on-one, -on -one, people. You, everybody, I don't care if you're in the Mexican style and you're moving like this, you got to be catching punches, knowing how to catch them with your shoulder like my man Julio um, Caesar. Chavez Sr., he be catching punches, bro. I don't give a – even if you Joe Calzaghe, you catching punches. Even if you Tyson Fury, even though I felt that he got over with that little move he pulled with the gloves, he still be catching Canelo, catching punches with the shoulders rolling. 
I'm not saying they looking like James Tony when you do it, but you have to know how to do all of those things when you boxing, dog. That's just boxing one on one. You got to know how to catch. Listen, all right. For example, you catch punches with your hands. Everybody know that in the gloves. But do you catch? You know how to catch them with your form? When they throw, you hold your hands like this, and when they throw a punch, you just throw like that and knock it to the side. Do you know how to just deflect a shot with your elbow? Do you know how to throw your shoulder? You know how to catch it with your shoulder. When they throw the jab, you catch it, and then their hand pop to the side. Or sometimes when they throw in that hook and you left-handed and you you flicking your jab and they throw a hook, you take your shit and go like this. And when at the same time they throw their hook, it'll pop over. It oh shit, almost knock my glasses off. Damn, I almost pop myself up. Um, it'll pop over their damn head when you throw the hook. Bang, it'll go straight over. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know how to do shit like that. That's important. That that's the shit to save you. Like, for example, when Amir Khan fought Canelo, Amir Khan um got fainted in the middle of Amir Khan throwing a jab. Canelo fainted and threw the right hand over. Bang. And caught him. If Amir Khan knew how to do this, when Canelo threw the right hand, he would have uh, he would have blocked it. And then he, all he had to do was back out of there. He didn't know that because he was only taught this. You see what I'm saying? Those are the things that every boxer needs to know, whether it's your style or not. How to roll punches, how to take the shock off of them, how to block them with the shoulders, how to block them with the hands, how to open a hand up in the glove. How to um stay low and cut put the elbows right here. And now my elbows is touching my hips too. So when they ripping the shots, I'm catching them upstairs and downstairs. And then I'm looking and when they throwing them down the pipe, I'm going, uh-uh. And then I'm rolling up under the shots too. Staying tight but relaxed. Not tight as intense, but just tight and relaxed, calm, breathing, relaxing. Nobody's going to throw them shots for a whole three minutes. And as soon as they get tired... You go to their guts. Not even when they get tired, when they're done throwing all them stupid punches, you go directly to their guts. Because you got to remember, they threw all them punches. That's like sprinting. As soon as you go to their body, you just double the slowdown. And if y'all was watching Floyd fight Manny, that's what he was doing. He told, so I'm not giving up secrets. I'm just telling you something that Floyd was saying. He already said, but motherfuckers don't be listening to Floyd. Maybe too busy talking about who he didn't fight and win when they had no chance from jump. Because his skill level is too high. And now y'all see it now that he's not around. And it's sad because I've been seeing it. Yeah, Holyfield did collapse. Because he was tired from them punches, but he wasn't even hurt. He wasn't like, boom, and then he was like wobbly. He was just getting tired from bang, bang, over and over. Bang, 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 bang. Damn, that shit break your body down. Let me tell you why. Remember y'all was talking about timing and speed? Timing, member is mental first. I'm thinking ahead of you. So if it's you're thinking at 12 and I'm thinking at 3 p.m., I'm ahead of you. I'm thinking on Wednesday and you're thinking on Mondays. Already live Monday. But when you come to me telling me about what you did on Tuesday, I'm going to time you. That's why he was getting over. Timing. He couldn't do what he wanted to do because he already knew what he was going to do. He didn't have the more knowledge and the higher skill set and the craftsmanship. It don't matter. And the thing is, you could have said a young holy field. It would not matter. It's about his skill set. His skill set. And he talking about right now how he out pointed me, out hustled him. And it's not that he even out hustled him. He made him see that right there. I told y'all he put fake pressure on him. He think he out hustled him. He didn't even out hustle you. He just stayed in range of you and you wasn't willing to be comfortable in him being close to you like that and just going, wop, wop, wop. No, little nigga, stay back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flick your ass from right there. Then, all right, you want to stay right there? I'm going to just chill right there. 
God, God, take that short shit. God, God, all right, you're going to get your load. You're going to have to get all the way in or get back. God, that That's the part where people don't understand. You got to be able to fight in every range. And that's the part that y'all don't be seeing. I know people who can fight in what range they can fight in. As soon as I see him boxing, I'll be like, some I know who going to bust his pack in his weight class because he only comfortable in his certain range. And when he get in that range, he don't know what punches to throw. He panic and make certain mistakes like pulling back with your head. Now, if you in medium range, you don't pull back with your head like that. Somebody that just boom, say when you was fighting Joe Frazier and or a nigga like Joe Frazier and you put and you in medium range. Y'all just got done exchanging. You're not comfortable in medium range, so you pull back with your head up. A nigga like Joe Frazier, anybody like Floyd, or anybody with a leap and hook like Roy, Floyd, Joe, yeah, they're going to catch you, knock you straight out because you don't pull back on the hook. You roll under the hook or you catch it and you don't hook with the hooker. So that's what I'm saying. And that's what that's the part. That's the part where it can get tricky with the boxing because you really got to know the certain fundamental rules of how to move and how to be in those dimensions so that you don't get hit with those shots. You got to be all the way ahead of somebody on the thinking. Yeah, that's how Ali good. Hey, James, that was a good one. That's how Ali got dropped. He got dropped because he um pulled back on the hook. And I heard Floyd say that in, in an interview, like Ali didn't know that then. You know what I mean? So he pulled back on the hook. But if all Ali had to do was when he was going back, he, he right-handed. When he was going back, all he had to do was go up and keep his chin down and go like this on Joe. He could You can pull back with this hand down. You put this shoulder on here like this. And you pull back like this. You don't pull back with your chin up, dog. When you pull back, when you do any type of pull counter move, if you watch Floyd, he don't go. That's how I know niggas ain't doing no knee gusses. It's not doing the pull counter right. They're going, huh. no, it's like this. Look, look how I pull back. See how I pull back with my chin down? Uh, and then if the nigga's still coming at you, See, I put my shoulders together. Uh, uh. That's how Floyd be doing. Y'all don't see that, though. Y'all shit that y'all don't see. Now he retired. I get to tell what he be doing. I know it because I'll be doing it. You pull it back. You go, uh, bang, and still with the right. You don't pull it back like this and all none of that shit. And when Floyd, even when Floyd got clipped by Madonna, when Maidana threw the jab and then leaned over and threw the right and Floyd tried to pull a counter on him, his chin was still down. So he got hit like in this area instead of just in the chin. But the shit still wrung his head, but he didn't get clipped clean on the chin. And that's the part where it's detail oriented at the top level. And that's the part y'all don't see why he didn't get knocked out by the punch. The difference between getting knocked out and getting hurt or wrong right when the bell ring by his hand having his chin down one inch from he could have then boom and got hit. Bang, that shit would have hit his chin. He would have hit the ground because he went like this. Bang, when he got hit, he was like, oh, shit, he rose up and he was hurt. But since his chin was down, it hit him in this area. It didn't hit him in the chin. That's going to protect you. That little detail move, keeping your chin down in boxing. And James Tony constantly was like this. So even when a Vander hit him, it was never really all the way on the tip. It was kind of right here. And when you like this, you see it anyway. So he kind of rolled with it. Bang. And then right when he throw the hook, he just put the hand here and nothing's happening. It's over with. It's, it's over. It's over. You get nothing. It's dead. Dead. But yeah, that was the film study today, man. We just keeping it short. Did a quick James Tony and uh Evander Holyfield. It was a good fight. Both of them was getting work in. Um, it's just that the thing that Evander Holyfield wasn't doing back then, he wasn't moving his head. His head stand, even though he bouncing like this, 
my head is not going. You, you can't just be bouncing like this. Your head got to be moving. All directions going, thinking. Going side to side with the feet, actually picking up your feet and walking away and coming back. That's real boxing. People would be like, why would you do that? It's showing off. No, I'm making you reset. I'm walking all the way to the left, then coming back to you. You don't know what I'm doing. You remember like, what the fuck? Y'all might walk off and then you might be like, you know how niggas jump back and get their arms loose and I walk back, bang, steal you, knock you straight out. You got to have moves, man. You got to have moves. You cannot be throwing punches without purpose. Every, every move has to have a purpose. That's what I've built into my boxing style. I'm fainting. I'm steady coming to you. I'm moving. If you're doing a certain move, I'm going to do exactly what I need to do to disrupt what you're doing. But I'm not even really thinking about it. I just already got a gear. All oh, this nigga using his jab, I'm a lefty. Let me use my jab, too, and keep it out there to keep his jab hand away. And then I'm only just really thinking about going to the body. I'm coming to you, chilling, 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 chilling. All oh, this nigga trying to go downstairs. Let me just throw something, throw a fake, faint uppy cuts. So a faint uppers. The uppy. When somebody try to go to your body, you go. You go with the uppercut. Either hand. I'm left handed, so when the right hander go to my body, I throw the left uppy straight down the middle. Yup, stay from down there. That my coach Mike Johnson used to say that bring their head up out of there with a the up. So I just yup bring their head up, and I yup yup they start standing up under there. I start just ripping. If they pull straight up, you come up with the hook. If they pull back, you shoot the straight right. You throw them one at a time with two hard ones and then roll up under, do a move, get an angle. That way you can always stay being first. That's the thing. You do all that shit. You did it first and you'll be at the angle before him. And that's thinking ahead. Better timing. He turned, you throw the shot, bang, catch him. He drunk. It's just little stuff like that. When I be watching fighters, if they not doing all of that, then they got a lot. Of, they got a lot of things that they need to work on. Like I just told you, this fight. All I mainly said was all he really did was jab, hook off the jab, and throw the right hand, throw a one-two. Then he might have peppered him up like pop, 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 pop. But all he was doing was going pop, 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 pop. pop, pop. Then right back to it. Pop, pop, pop. Just just all jabs and hooking off and going to the guts. Then he'll throw one, two, bang, bang, catch him clean. Slip some of his shit, catch it, stay in there. Keep working the jab, hooking off the jab. Every now and then throw a couple soft right hands in there, catch him on the chin just with the speed, though. And that's all he was doing. Broke his ass down, made him wake up and take out that trash. Orange juice gone. So this live is gone. We out, y'all. Good looking. Shout out to my folks. Film study. Next, we're going to study somebody else like Roberto Duran. Because I heard I got a couple on Roberto Duran. Then we're going to study somebody like y'all really be watching. Somebody y'all probably like never heard of for real. You know what I mean? One of these cats y'all really don't be watching. Then we're going to be breaking down what they be doing. I got a couple. You know what I'm saying? Got a couple. James Tony is one of my favorites. Because if you really want to see boxing in its purest form, you watch James Tony Because he's going to give you inside work, outside work, defense, offense, footwork, taunting. He's going to be inside, tying you up. He gonna go under the ropes. There's nothing that James Coney, James Tony can do. He's very comfortable in there, and everybody who fought him knows that. He fought Samuel Peters one time, bro. What? Dude, it's crazy. But yeah, bro, that's it for the live today, man. Y'all be easy. We out. <clears throat> Hit y'all with that burp.